Surpresa Encantata. Hey, what's up? It's me, it's Richard. I'm back with another video. It's been a really long time and I'm so excited to be back. I don't know, I guess I traveled and I thought, oh, I'm gonna come back and I talk about my trips. And then I just didn't. And I tried to film a bunch of times and I would get in front of the camera and just I couldn't do it. You know what, today it's, it's happened. It feels right, I'm here, I'm, um, you know, the hair is doing what it's doing and I have an idea. <laughs> Do you have headphones in? No. Don't listen to me. My hair is gonna get bigger as this video goes on and that will not be a sorpresa. <laughs> That is normal. I am only wearing the Dr. Yard, um, Dr. Yard cream color corrector. Uh, so this is like very super natural and kind of like what I would look like if you met me in person, which is, I mean, usually what I look like in my videos, but like a little bit better. And then I always say in person, I look a lot more human, which isn't my favorite. Surpresa encantado. I'm hoping that some of these amazing things that happened over the last few months will come out through scent memories. So I'm gonna start with this. This is um, Rebel by Rihanna. I think this purchase was really inspired by Ange from 50 Cents UK. Ange, happy new year. I'm a huge fan, I think you know that. I know that Ange talked about this a few times and when she was talking about it, I was like, this sounds really, really good, but it could also be like, I don't know. I really um, went back and forth on this fragrance and it literally only cost $25. I have thought less about things that cost thousands of dollars. Um, but I really waffled on this one. Anyhow, I finally got it and I just fucking love it. Yeah, this is really good. Ugh. Like there's cacao in here, there's strawberry. I almost just got like a little whisper of coconut, which, you know, isn't my favorite, but uh, I like to hear. I don't know if there is coconut in here, but it's boozy, it's fruity, it is warm, it's deep but sparkling, mm, lots of patchouli, I guess. For me, this is like a hidden gem, a cheapy, and I was so surprised by it. I love it. It's intoxicating, it's addictive, totally worth 25 bucks, worth more than 25 bucks. I've enjoyed less for way more money. This one was a real sorpresa. So Martin really inspired me to get into some Middle Eastern perfumes. He's made a lot of videos about them, and uh, I just thought, you know what? I We have like similar tastes and I have a feeling like there's some I might really like. So you know what? I just did it. This is one of the greatest surprises of 2022 for me. Azdaf Majdal Sultan. I love this perfume. Wow. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, the moment I sprayed this and sniffed it, I was, it is so fantastic. It's butch, it's sweet, it's woody. It's deep, it's warm, almost like a sauna, but I've smelled perfumes that had like this cedar kind of like sauna vibe and I didn't like it, but it's not so dry that it's arid. It's just, there is such a sexiness and a warmth and a sweetness to this that is really, I think, um, palatable and accessible and it is casting a spell. Chris and I were communicating, maybe it was in comments, maybe it was on Instagram, I don't remember, but it was about this perfume. At the time, I had said that this smelled like Furiosa by Fendi, or it just reminded me of Furiosa by Fendi. Chris had mentioned she didn't like that perfume at all, it was like an instant declutter. Now, I have only worn this maybe once or twice, like I've sprayed it a bunch, but I have really only worn it once or twice. So a few weeks ago, I decided to wear it because I was going through my collection to declutter things. So, and this was kind of on the list. It really surprised me. It's not like Furiosa at all. So Chris, if you see this, if you hear this, what was I, it is not like Furiosa at all whatsoever. Not at all. Gosh, this perfume is delightful. Honestly, it is sparkling. It's got a creaminess to it. There's a bit of a waxiness, but it, it's, it doesn't go lipstick and it does, I think I said sparkle. <laughs> it's bright. There's the slightest spirits aged in a barrel nuance to this perfume. I can't remember if there's iris in here, but on my skin, it started to really give me what I have enjoyed in a couple iris perfumes lately. Oh my gosh, I wish that was here. I don't have it because it's gone, but uh, Aqua Colonia Saffron and Iris was a dream perfume for me this year. Now it's only an eau de cologne, so it doesn't really last long, but 
That is one of the best smelling things I have ever smelled. I am totally, totally just like obsessed with it. I looked on Fragrantica and they said that this perfume from Eisenberg called Diabolique smells like 4711 Saffron and Iris. Wow, I really went off on a tangent there. That's okay, it's me. So, Histoire de Parfum, and this is called Olympia Music Hall. It is amazing, it's gorgeous. It's sophisticated, it's glamorous, complex yet simple. I mean, I guess there's just like, it's many things at once, but most of all, just fucking beautiful. Like this perfume is great. To Chris, I say this may surprise and delight you. Wow, it's so funny because a lot of these perfumes remind me of people I love here on YouTube. So this one, I am talking to, time to musk up, Rudy. I always call you Musk, but I think your name's Rudy, <laughs> anyhow. Um, so we've talked about this on Instagram. This is one of the most loved discontinued uh, perfumes for men, and this is its flanker. Now, this flanker also has like sort of the subtitle Ultramarine. So it's called Encense or Encense Ultramarine. And because of that, I really, really avoided getting this perfume because I hate blue fragrances. For the most part, I'm, I'm never, never into them. Whatever makes a perfume blue, whatever makes it sporty, is usually what turns me off about it. There are exceptions. I can like um, like a very sporty sort of apple scent. As long as it doesn't have too much of that synthetic sort of aquatic thing that makes perfumes masculine to like the world at large. But this is a gem. It's totally worth it. I took so long to buy this. I resisted it for quite some time. But I was at a... Um... Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, this perfume, like, oh, this is so good. I was at a perfume sale here in Toronto with uh, Francis from Happiness Sparkles, and I sprayed this perfume on, but I couldn't remember what it was. I knew that it was one of like four or five that I had sprayed on my skin, although that day I sprayed like, I don't know, 100 perfumes. I kept coming back to it, and I was like, this is gorgeous. The dry down was like, <clears throat> Delicious, amazing. I can't wait to wear it. It's actually a lot more affordable than its original, which is like the Encense or Encense. If it has an accent aigu, is it Encense? <laughs> Another perfume that absolutely warmed my heart and fed my soul and gave me just mm, intense scent memories this year. It's not new to me or anything like that, but I haven't had a bottle. <sighs> oh my God. I haven't had a bottle in a really long time. This perfume is, to me, ultimately sexy. I do like to go butch sometimes. And so I think that the original Dolce & Gabbana for men is like one of the sexiest perfumes ever made. Oh my God. What is it in this? Like, yeah, it's soapy. It is mildly spicy. It's just so sexy. And I really, I actually have some like intense intensely sexual. This perfume was like in my life at a time where I was doing a lot of things for the first time in a way that like I had never done them before and woo! Um, oh gosh, one of the same memories connected to this perfume involves a fully grown ass man telling me over and over again while in a very compromising position. I like you as a girl. So I went in on the Diana Vreeland house this year because they retail for $250 at Bergdorf Goodman and they were on fragrance set for 60 bucks. And I love Diana Vreeland, you know, her legacy, her style. She was so kooky. She loved to wear blush right up into her hairline. If you don't know who she is, definitely worth like doing some Googling and research. There's a documentary. They use like an, an actor to perform the role of Diana Vreeland in the documentary. So reading her writing and stuff like that. And you could just tell that it wasn't her. So it kind of pulls you out of it a bit, but it's still interesting to learn about this woman if you don't know about her. I have bought three bottles of it. Got it off fragrance scent, took it out of the box and it looked like this. Now, all these perfumes are supposed to look like this. It was like a totally sealed box, but it looked like this. And since it was so affordable, honestly, I just said, I'll give this one away because it's a great perfume and I'll buy another one. Bought another one, same thing. Upsetting, upsetting. Gave it away, bought another one, same thing. I'm almost tempted to buy a bottle of this for $250 because this is annoying. Anyhow, the point is, 
This was a really surprising perfume for me. It's sweet. It's deep. I felt like I always got a lot of cinnamon in here, but from what I remember, there are no cinnamon notes in this. I think there is saffron. To me, it smells like almost like a hot lips. It also does remind me of a Derek Lamb perfume called 2 AM Kiss, but I think I prefer this over that. But I would say that they're similar. There are floral nuances, but it's more spicy, sweet, but more than sweet, it's warm. Sometimes, you know, warmth can feel sweet because it's so enveloping. Warm, sweet, woody, and it has a great performance. Did I just like smell the glass? What the fuck? I've, I've lost my way on this one. Let me just um, take a two seconds. Okay, anyways, Empress of Fashion was a surprise for me this year. I loved it, I actually wore it quite a bit. It's great. This perfume surprised me. And you know what? There was a high probability that I was not gonna like this perfume because I don't think that I liked the original Scandal, but this did have a cherry note. And like so many people, I am obsessed with cherry and it is Tom Ford's fault. Sometimes honey for me is like, no, I can't do it. Like B by Zoologist. Ugh. No, no, I can't. When it's like on your skin, when you wear it, how this performs, how it projects, how it just like emanates and warms and, and circles and the cloud, it's delicious. It's sexy. It's a bit carnal. I almost get like from the honey, like a tea note. It's really, really good. It's discontinued, but still like readily available. And I would get yourself some if you don't have it, if you kind of like, sexiness, if you like fruitiness, if you can handle something sweet. Even if the other scandals didn't work for you, this one really could. It is delicious and it was a real surprise for me this year. My channel is called Richard Kikot's Having a Scent Memory. And for me, my whole love of perfume, it's really like steeped in nostalgia. My passion for fragrance was really like formed during these like short period uh, when I was a child. It was when my mother wore poison and we had like a family friend who worked in the perfume industry and he would bring us bottles. Saying all that to just say that um, rediscovering this perfume was such a joy, such a delight, a sorpresa, because it's amazing. To me, it smells exactly like it did way back then. This perfume is by Todd Oldham. It could smell like something right now at first. You spray the perfume, it opens, but then it opens up kind of again. And that's when like the vintage element comes through, but it doesn't take over. It's not entirely vintage. It's also not exactly what's happening in perfumes right now, but it is a hidden gem. I mean, if you were reading Vogue in the 90s, you totally know who Todd Oldham is. He actually just relaunched um, like clothing under like, it's called like Todd Oldham Maker Shop and it's really cool stuff. This was such a surprise and a delight for me because I was just getting it to sort of fill this nostalgic need, but I didn't know necessarily that I would really enjoy it and want to wear it and love to wear it. I thought I might just enjoy having it and you know, coming around and sniffing it, but I have loved wearing this. Really, really surprised me. So happy to have it. This perfume is just totally random. I never anticipated that I would want to discover anything from the Dahlia Devin collection by Givenchy. I do have to say that this year there were a few Givenchy perfumes that just knocked my socks off. One in particular that I didn't end up getting, but my friend Frances from Happiness Sparkles, she bought a special edition bottle of Organza Indecence at the sale. Why didn't I buy it? Oh God, I was just being weird. Sometimes you know you're just weird. It was like literally the only thing I should have bought that day and I didn't buy it. I went back a week later and it was gone. So at that sale, I smelled a bunch of Givenchy perfumes and this one really, really took me. I got it at quite an affordable price. It's discontinued. I'm not sure about its availability online. I think it's available. This is Dahlia Devin Nectar de Parfum and mm. yes, creamy, floral, it's sweet, but it I would say that it's more warm, waxy, creamy. Is it peachy? 
even? Is there osmanthus in this? After I got home, I realized that this does smell a little bit like uh, the Idole perfumes. Not the original, but the Intense and the Aura. The bottle really like lets you know how this smells. Although if this is leading you to believe that it's like super ambery, I don't think it is. It's not like an amber spicy, but it is a waxy, creamy, sweet floral. Just a few more surprises, and then I want to talk about some things that really delighted me. Mmm. <laughs> Ah, this perfume, oh my God. Okay, I got a sample of Colonies by Nishane. I actually was like not even ever gonna spray it because I thought like cologne, eau de cologne, cologne sounds, you know, sort of like stereotypical masculine. I'm probably not gonna like it. I sprayed that at some point and it totally surprised me. It wowed me. It really blooms, it really opens up. There's apple in there. I love an apple note. Like I love apple as much as I love cherry. I found out that there was like a flanker to that. This one is a Colonies Saffron and it is amazing. And you know, Saffron gives me leather vibes and there might even be leather in this, but it actually, when I was wearing it uh, like a month and a half ago, I realized that as the day went on, this was totally smelling like Ganymede to me, which I love that perfume. I think anybody could wear this. It just depends if you like uh, like a saffron leathery vibe. You could even say like suede, like if you think like a, if a suede note is softer and more buttery, it could pass for that. It is delicious. It's gorgeous. It really performs so well and it was such a surprise and I think that this is well I've never heard anybody talk about it I don't watch too many male youtubers and this would definitely be marketed like as a men's fragrance but I think there's some ladies out there who would like it especially if you like a leather note so I am obsessed with a fruity note I love something that is like juicy and fruity this is purple molecule by Zarco perfumes I also have pink molecule and it totally totally could have been in here but it wasn't truly a surprise for me because like I smelled it before I bought it. Although I was surprised and delighted when I found that it smells exactly like dewberry. And I spray about 20, 25 sprays of pink molecule and I could smell it all day. All day, it's so juicy, it's so fruity, it's so fresh, it's really exhilarating, it's really uplifting. For me, Purple Molecule is not much different. It doesn't smell the same, but it's giving me the same vibe, like that same deliciousness, that same juiciness. But here, I believe it's, oh, oh my God. It's similar because I'm getting a dewberry vibe. I guess it's like dragon fruit and musk, but it is, it's just so bright. It's so juicy. It's really, really fresh and it really shines. It's got like a depth because of this like ultimate juiciness. It's so thirst quenching. <laughs> if you like fruity perfumes, it's perfect for the summer. You could even wear it in early fall and definitely in the spring. This perfume totally blew my mind and I had such a great experience wearing it. I love wearing this perfume. Surpresa, encantata. So something that continued to surprise and delight me all through 2022 was the generosity of so many people. My love language is giving gifts. That's how I show you that I love you. That's how I let you know I'm thinking about you. That is how I express my love. My love language for receiving love is really gifts too. To be the focus of someone's generosity is just such a validating experience for me. It's not about like that this thing costs something and that makes me feel like important. No, it's just, it's the thought. It is the investment in the time. And of course things cost money, but I think people who love to share and are generous and give gifts, it's really literally not about the money at all, but it's just about like feeling seen. Someone saying, I thought about you and I thought about this and I want you to have it because this makes me think of you. This perfume was gifted to me by the amazing Sunny from Sunny Sense. Oh my gosh, Sunny, you make me so happy. Whenever I see a new video of yours, I'm just like so excited to watch it. I know I'm gonna enjoy myself and they usually come at just the right time. Oftentimes late at night when I am like thinking, oh, I wish there was a new perfume video for me to watch. Amazingly enough, I've never smelled this perfume. I've never had it. 
and it's a very famous classic vanilla perfume and it's amazing. I'll tell you that when you wear this, hours and hours into it, you're getting surprised by how this is unfolding. This perfume really takes you on a trip. God, what is that? Like, yeah, it's vanilla, but it's also like, gosh, it's so many things. There's like almost a little bit smoky, almost a little bit incense, almost a little bit fruity, almost a little bit creamy. Actually, not a little bit creamy. It definitely is creamy. Is it waxy? And then there's just these other accords. I don't even know what to um, relate them to. I don't know what to connect them to. I don't know how to label them, how to articulate that. But for something that is like, you know, a vanilla perfume, this literally like rises above that. It's wonderful. It's such a treat. I was so, so happy to get this. Sunny, thank you for seeing me and thank you for sending this to me. I had done a sniffing party video uh, where I smelled a bunch of perfume decans sent to me by Joss. These perfumes were in that video and after the video aired, she just said, you know what? I think you like those more than I do. I'm sending them to you. So Joss sent me Rose Jam and Confetti by Lush. These are my first Lush perfumes that I've ever owned. So awesome, so exciting. I love rose jam, I love confetti. So rose jam is just exactly as it sounds. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Why do I love rose so much? Like honestly, it's kind of weird because I love rose so much. I'm actually really picking up like honey in this, but this to me is like literal rose petals sweetness, juiciness. I, I am getting honey. I don't know if I picked up honey in this before. I'm sure a lot of you know about Rose Jam, but receiving this perfume completely surprised me, absolutely delighted me, and to wear it is just like to no pleasure. This is called confetti because it smells like those um, uh, confetti, which are those like almond bonbonieri uh, that they give out at weddings, uh, or people call them Jordan almonds. It's those sort of like pastel coated almonds, and it does smell like that. It really does. Creamy, waxy. There is a greenness to this perfume that makes it so tempting. The sweetness juxtaposed with this sort of like almost acrid green nuttiness just makes this really, really, really tempting. Unusual too, and totally worth checking out. Now, some people would not be into this and there's even like a bitterness to it. But for me, it's, oh God, and, and an earthiness, like this is really earthy too. It's just, honestly, I was so happy to receive this and I, Love, love, love this perfume and I love to wear it. I've had one other Merchant of Venice perfume. It was called Flower Fusion. I didn't like it. I ended up decluttering it. This is called My Pearls by Merchant of Venice. It came in this amazing presentation. The box was just mm, getting it, receiving it. It was like, uh, you know, you feel like you win a lottery when people shine their light on you, when they conjure up an experience for you and, you know, They've spent time and they think about you and they go, I'm gonna give this to you because I think you're gonna like getting it. That's magic to me, okay? That's like the stuff that like makes the world go round. Actually, it, it almost, it's similar to confetti. That waxy, sweet, waxy creaminess, it's in there and then it's got some greenness. It doesn't have the earthiness of confetti, but this is a perfect perfume, I think in the summer and in the spring. I think that this might even cool you down and freshen you up in the humidity and heat. I'm excited to test that out in 2023. This is one of my favorite, favorite things that I received this year. It's called Paramour, it's by Clarins. It's like the bottle is just adorable. It's so great. You just spray that little heart. Oh, it's giving a lot of, coverage that atomizer that's delicious mm. yeah i really really like this i don't think joss liked it that much and i am totally like impressed that she thought i would enjoy this because i mean i love all those perfumes i'm not having the same reaction i had when i smelled rose jam that like basically like got me high but this there's just something i like about this so much it's got sweetness it's got juiciness there are woody nuances that ground it it also sparkles. How many times have I said that today? I guess that's where I like perfumes. I like it to sparkle, I like it to be juicy, and I like some, 
Oh yeah, like this is just, mm. yeah. Wow, I've just sprayed so many <laughs> sprays of this. This is Paramore by Clarins. Thank you, Joss. Sorpresa Encantata. A great surprise for me this year was to receive Dates Delight by the House of Oud from Amy from Savor Salvage Scent. It was my first um, perfume by the House of Oud. It won't be my last. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, because it's it's deep, it's sweet. I know for Amy you said that for her she couldn't even necessarily find like the right time to wear this even in winter. Well, for me, I'm not having that problem. I am totally finding the right time to wear this perfume. Amy is just absolutely delightful. Her channel is amazing. I got to meet her, I think it was this year. Was it like in February this year? I don't know, I think it was this year. But she took a trip to Paris and had a stopover in Toronto. And we met up in just like the hotel she was staying at for the stopover at a restaurant in the hotel. It was wonderful. It was so enriching and really energy inducing and life affirming. And it just felt so good. Felt like good, good old friends. And we had no shortage of things to talk about. The conversation just flowed. She's wonderful. Just, and I, you know what, I knew she would be because as soon as I watched her first video, I was like, this is somebody I relate to. This is somebody I can connect with. She reminds me of some of the women in my family. You know, I had a sister who was a little bit older than me and like a cool sort of older sister and she was funky and she just knew about makeup and clothes. Her father was my stepfather. We didn't have the same mother. So she's like my stepsister, but I just really, really looked up to her when I was younger and I thought she was so pretty and so stylish and she just knew about things that I didn't necessarily know about at that time. And I just, for some reason, when I watched Amy, thought of my sister and when we were together, I felt the same way. Not some weird like, oh, your sister or brother, but just like, a connection. I enjoyed my time with her so much. I do plan on going to visit her in Cleveland. Really excited about that. I can't wait to see her again. I can't wait to talk to her. So I cannot talk about being surprised and delighted in 2022 without talking about Yulia from sensiblings.ca. Well, one thing is Yulia is a teacher. She has been my teacher. I'm doing my high school with her. Well, I don't have an education, not one that you get in school. So I never graduated high school. I actually didn't even go to high school. I only went to grade eight. That's as far as I went in school. I was constantly harassed and assaulted at school. It was super intense and it was like that, honestly, since my first day of kindergarten. And it just reached like a fever pitch and it was not sustainable. It wasn't doable even. It just wasn't, it couldn't continue at that time. That was a long time ago and I hope that things are different for kids now, but it literally just, it was at a point where it's like, this can't go on. It was so embarrassing too, it was so humiliating and I just couldn't deal with it anymore. And my mother was like, yeah, I'm calling it. We had gone to the superintendent of schools and they were like, we can't guarantee his safety, even going from class to class. And of course, because everyone thought I was a fag and whatever, but like, honestly, at that time, I wasn't even like out to myself. Was it about being gay? Who knows? It's probably more about being feminine and, people really despising femininity in men. And then that makes people think that you're gay. And like, so yeah, I like was gay, I'm a queer person. But when I'm in kindergarten, when I'm grade one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like, am I gay or am I just feminine and that, you know, disgusts people? So I never graduated high school. And when I started communicating with Yulia here on YouTube and that came out in our conversations, she let me know that she was a teacher and basically she got permission for me to join her program where I am working on getting my high school diploma. This started last year with Yulia and I, and I got like a bunch of credits for high school. I'm gonna finish it this year and I'll graduate in June. But we also have a shared interest in the teachings of Abraham, who is like a, a spiritual teacher and teaches the law of attraction. Abraham was a woman named Esther Hicks who translates the knowledge of non-physical energies they call themselves Abraham. Esther will meditate and then begin receiving these blocks of thought from the non-physical energies. And really what it's about in that moment is I, how I see it is that like then Abraham, Esther, Abraham um, recalibrates your thinking on this 
thing that you're sort of focused on so that you can think about it and feel about it in a way that's more useful to you and in line with what it is that you want instead of thinking about it and focusing on it in a way that blocks you from what you want. So you could be like wishing and hoping for a change, but you're sort of like not doing it in the most effective way. And that is bringing more of what you don't want in your life. It's not a very complicated thing, but I guess it's a little bit esoteric and sort of the language is specific to like these teachings and it might like turn some people off. I'm not really interested in like getting you to believe it and it's okay if you don't and you think it's totally cuckoo, la crazy, like that's totally fine for me and I understand that. I don't determine the value of like things in my life or things that I believe in based on like, you know, buy-in from anybody else other than me. It is really fun to have something like that in common with somebody because it's such a specific thing. So Yulia and I have that in common and we went on a cruise in Europe on the Adriatic Sea. Adriatic Sea, but then also while we were on the cruise, they kept referring to it as the Ionian Sea. Are the Adriatic Sea and the Ionian Sea the same things? Maybe that's a question for my teacher, Yulia. On the sea days when you're not in port on the cruise, uh, Abraham was doing workshops. It was just, honestly for me, because I'm like so into it, it was just like amazing. And I actually got to speak to Abraham. I was like chosen to go into the hot seat. I got to have my little moment with Abraham and talk to them about something that was, you know, in my way and that I wished I could recalibrate my thinking on and sort of do a bit differently. I'm just trying to express to you the things that Yulia and I shared this year. So it was school, it was Abraham, it was like an actual literal vacation. I came home on a Saturday night from work at like 1 a.m. and there was a box here and it was from Yulia. She had told me that she was gonna send me Caltat Night, which has been on my wish list for a long time. I don't know why I hadn't bought it yet. And um, so I knew that Caltat Night was gonna be in this box, but she also sent me Angel Muse EDP, which is totally been on my list. And then this, which completely blew my mind. She sent me her bottle of Female Christ by 1969. This perfume is so cool. It really, really, really does smell like um, that patchouli that I remember wearing out of a tiny little bottle of patchouli oil that you buy at a head shop. There is also rhubarb in here, which y'all know I am obsessed with a rhubarb note. But the thing about this perfume that's so interesting it's sort of like hours and hours into it because it ends up being like very sweet and warm. It's very patchouli, medicinal, stringent uh, in the beginning. I just love this. I was so grateful to receive it. It's a very, very generous gift. Totally blew my mind and it was definitely a sorpresa. And the beautiful, beautiful Caltech night. Mm. You know, I had another experience with a tar collection. I bought Crystal Love for him. It did not work for me. I gave it away. I first smelled this when Emmy's World of Fragrance, Emmy from Emmy's World of Fragrance, sent me a sample. I did an Emmy sniffing party. I think it was like my first or second video of 2022. This perfume is so, so great. I really love it. Martin, who I mentioned earlier, just did a video about this. I was absolutely delighted to receive this. Yulia, thank you so much. We had such a good time on our trip. We had one day in port in Corfu. It was just Yulia and I. I was on this vacation with my husband. We had been in Rome for a week before we uh, boarded the cruise. A friend of mine, Paula, also came just on the cruise. It was kind of like three people were all on vacation with one person, me, but I was on vacation with three people. But in Corfu, it was a day for just Yulia and I, and we just had so much fun. And I was in the silliest of moods. On my trip to Italy, I definitely began speaking my own version of Italian or an Italian-like language. In Corfu, <laughs> I was like really, really hitting it. Fond, fond memories. Totally delighted and grateful to receive this. Yulia, thank you so much. Siemens! I've sort of been asking Yulia to let me purchase this from her, but she does this thing where she likes to keep perfumes she hates, to sort of challenge herself and learn to love them, but this just wasn't going there for her. Mm. And I really, really wanted it. So now I have the Angel Muse EDT and the Angel Muse EDP, and do I even need anything else? For the last sorpresa of this video, so this is Killian Adults. I got this off FragranceBuy.ca for $109. 
who's a tester, usually they'll say no cap if there's no cap. It's not always a guarantee that they'll say no cap if it's no cap. And y'all know I don't want nothing with no cap. I just said to myself that day, I said, honestly, I don't care if it just comes like this. I've been saving caps from bottles that I finish and I would have found a way to like make this work. I was delighted to find that it was a tester with a cap. The thing is, it just really surprised me because I'm opening up to different styles of perfume. I mean, I really, really wanted things to be beast, beast, heavy, deep, dark, loud, powerful. And this is not like that, but it is still really, really satisfying. Getting it, spraying it, enjoying it so much made me think about, I had a travel spray of sunsets, which I totally hated because there was like a fruity lychee something else note in it that really smelled like body odor to me. But because I enjoyed this so much, I ended up pulling that out and I loved it. I don't know. And I really like, as it went on and went on, I really liked it. And it's the same with this. As I wore it, I liked it more and more and more. And I can definitely find lots of occasions to wear this. It might be just at home to just enjoy for myself in the spring. I even think this could work in the summer in the high heat. And that might make it even show out and show off a little bit more. I really slept on this line, but I also think like all things happen at the right time because even if I smelled all of them back then, I probably wouldn't have bought even any of them because like I said, just at that time, I wanted like strong, strong, heavy, heavy, powerful, you know, deep, like really like intense florals, really like bitchy or really sweet or really like stank or just whatever, you know what I mean? And this is a quieter perfume, but it really does perform nicely on the skin and it definitely has like its rightful place. Well, people, that's it. I did it. <sighs> I just want to thank everybody for sticking with me. I know you're still out there and I am still here. I'm not here, you know, it's just because I'm like building up my life and that takes uh, a lot of focused energy. You know, I still have a lot of things that I want to achieve and experiences I want to have. Sometimes you're just in that season of planting things, you know, watering them and nurturing them and, and helping things grow. Sometimes you're in a season of inspired action. Some people think the law of attraction is all about like thinking and feeling and not doing any work. It's a misconception because it's not about that. It is about doing the work when you're inspired to do it. I think it was like even turning into a bit of a phobia. My husband and I, we do therapy, but we also do sex therapy. Our sex therapist said, you know, sometimes if you guys aren't like being intimate and connecting, it can become like this sort of like chasm and, and you actually become phobic because you have all this like irrational fear and nerves connected to like sex and intimacy. And that sometimes you just have to do it just have to do a little something, get through an awkward moment to sort of like break through that like phobia. I feel like this is a bit similar. I just had to do it, but you know what? I did have to be in the right space and I was. So if you made it this far, you're a real one. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year's.